me, you two, Dylan, The Clash, Wonder, Barry, Springsteen. And I'll just give you a little uh, sample of some of the stuff you can expect to hear on there. Here's Duffy. Say, live and let die. Yeah, so a bit of Duffer is doing Live and Let Die. Live and let die. <laughs> Bit of a stretch for the kooks and uh, Lily Allen with Mick Jones from The Clash doing The Clash's Straight to Hell. So that's some of the uh, sort of stuff that you'll hear on this new, as I say, War Child album, All the Money Goes to Charity. So we'll talk about um, this, this tune that we're going to play and also kind of charity records more generally. After you've heard this one, this is also on there. Scissor Sisters doing their version of Roxy Music's Do the Strand. Scissor Sisters, their version of Roxy Music's Do the Strand, which is featured on this new War Child Heroes charity album. And we come to you, Sammy. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. You loved it? I really loved it. I mean, I love the original anyway. You only often get to hear it now at family discos, weddings and the like. But that was brilliant. I'm um, all over the Scissor Sisters anyway, but that's probably the best thing we've done in a long while. Dan, um, what's your take generally on the charity album? It can be a mixed bag. It's all, I'm sure done for, you know, for Yeah, reasons. well, it, it almost always is a mixed bag, but it feels a bit churlish to criticise them per se, because usually there's an honourable uh, cause behind it. But I would generally, uh, with my uh, smug, uh, self-righteous hat on, if I like the cause, maybe I'll just make a donation rather than buy the album. As if. Yeah, right. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> um, remember all the days when we used to live together? We yeah. never did anything for charity, did we? <laughs> yeah. Remember we never bought the big no, issue? We, act nothing. we actively laughed at charity. Never saw a copy of the big issue in my eyes. Nope. Great days. <laughs> um, her, you are a man who both loathes the Sister Sisters and good causes. <laughs> I do, yeah. I I did buy the first War Child album album because it had it was the first time that Lucky by Radiohead was ever heard anywhere, oh, right. uh, which was astonishing. And having heard the tracks, uh, the little snippets we played before that, I was prepared to be upset by that. Then you said it was the Scissor Sisters, and I was even more prepared to throw down my headphones and storm out because but, you're a homophobe. Um, well, no, just because they're dreadful. But that was mildly <laughs> funky, and I quite enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you very much indeed for your opinions. Round of applause. Quite eloquent. Well done. Um, so, uh, as I say, on today's show, we have been trying to cater to you, the listeners, in every which way we can, and, um, someone did get in touch, let me see, it was Roxanne from Bristol County in Birmingham, she says, would you perform a short radio play, please? Very much an underused art form. Uh, I'm sure if you listen to Radio 4 more frequently, then you will hear plays, but, um, we've concocted a short play, we've not written anything, I've just, I'm just, literally, we're just gonna put this together for you now, kind of improvise it, freeform style. <laughs> um, we've already established that Sammy is some kind of teenage dirtbag, yeah. and, um, she is, uh, she's had a baby, we decided she's had a baby. You joined the play quite late. <laughs> it's, it's third act, probably. <laughs> and, um, it's been, it's been going so long, it's five hours long, this play, it's, <laughs> It's exhausting. Um, and uh, she is hooked on laughing gas. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. And um, she has had this baby, but she's not sh sure who the father is. There are two ne'er do wells um, who are possible contenders, played by Dan and Harry. Uh, Harry's playing Trevor. <laughs> Hello. Okay, using very much his own voice. <laughs> well, I could gruff it up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> is that gruffed up? Kinda. <laughs> are you from the north? I might be. <laughs> are, you, are you played by a Muppet? <laughs> yes. And um, we've also got Tiny Dan who plays Roy. I help. Ooh. Ooh I help. Where are you from? Uh, I'm, I'm from to Manchester, Sheffield. <laughs> okay. Right. I play a local high school teacher who has been trying to help um, Teenage Dirtbag through these. She's only ever referred to it as <laughs> Teenage Dirtbag or TD. Um, <laughs> I, my name's Iqbal. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do the accent, <laughs> but um, I'm just, yeah, I speak very much like myself. Because a lot of people have come to see Steve in the show, I'm very much the big name, so I can't start affecting a different accent, that would be disappointing. So you join us late in this stage. Um, both of these uh, ne'er-do-wells want the baby, they want to claim it for their own, for various reasons. Um, Trevor, what's your plan? Steal it. <laughs> and use it as a front <laughs> for my money laundering scheme. <laughs> You're gonna what? You're gonna use it for your money laundering? How do you use a child for as a front for money laundering schemes? Basically, I'm running an ice cream van, which is a money laundering operation, and I need to attract children. <laughs> so by having a pretty baby, 
<laughs> children will come and buy ice cream. <laughs> I'll tell you this. <laughs> Trevor's going to be featuring in a sequel every week. <laughs> There's no denying that. I think we're all in love with Trevor. Uh, um, meanwhile, Roy, what's your plan? I, I plan to use kids to uh, make cheap trousers <laughs> for, for export market for Isle of Man. <laughs> There's a big market in the Isle of Man for uh, knocked off oh, trousers. Aye. Okay, well, listen, do you, you don't have any idea, do you, TD, which of these is your, uh, is the real father? I haven't got a clue. Are you using your own accent there? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're still giggling away though. <laughs> Pretend I'm on the gas You're and on the gas. massively amused by my two partners. <laughs> <laughs> what, what attracted you to these two men originally? <laughs> I'm very handsome. <laughs> They're entrepreneurial skills. <laughs> sure. Um, well, listen, as Iqbal, the local high school teacher, I am going to play King Solomon. Alright? And we'll see who the real father is. Who really loves this baby as their own. Because I'm going to do exactly what King Solomon did, which is the <laughs> only obvious solution. I'm going to cut the baby in half. <laughs> All right, you'll remember this. That was Solomon's plan. Cut the baby in half. Give half to each. Okay. Uh, Trevor, what's your view on that? There's money in awful. <laughs> <laughs> There's money in awful. So you're happy for me to slice the baby in half? Yep. <laughs> and uh, what about you, Roy? Uh, well, I have to say, Iqbal, that uh, <laughs> slicing to baby enough seems slightly silly because to baby will be dead and will be of no use to either Trevor or indeed teenage dirtbag or myself, <laughs> whether or not I am to dad. So you're saying that I shouldn't cut the baby in half? I, I think it's silly. Are you happy for me to give it to Trevor? Uh, well, it's preferable to cut him little infants in half because <laughs> it'll be messy and dead. I've often thought that was true of King Solomon's plan. I've always thought mm. maybe that was a flawed plan. It Robin is. said that King Solomon was the wisest man in the Bible. I'm not entirely convinced, because um, I don't understand why one person would allow the baby to be cut in half. <laughs> I don't know who wants half a baby, even in olden times. Well, I think Trevor should justify decision. <laughs> well... <laughs> uh, like I said, money in awful, <laughs> and you can sell entrails on eBay. <laughs> well, uh, I've made my decision, and I've identified uh, who the true father is. Only a person who truly loved the baby uh, and adored it and wished it to be their own would allow it to be cut in half and sold for awful. <laughs> <laughs> so, Trevor, here's the little baby. May you be very happy with this <laughs> mu Muppet. <laughs> And teenage dirtbag. <laughs> Good night. The end. Thank you so much indeed for listening. Um, that's pretty much it uh, for this Steve show. We uh, we're going to try and squeeze in another uh, piece of music, but um, there's been no time really because uh, we've got Stuart McConey coming up next. Uh, he's pre-recorded. He's on tape. He's not here. He's not here live. My apologies for that. Um, but yes, we'll be back next week. Uh, have we got anything exciting next week? Amanda Palmer. Amanda Palmer coming in to play for us mm -hmm. next week in the chat, so that would be tremendous. Um, and is there any other final things we need to wrap up before we go? Because I know a lot of people have been uh, texting and emailing. I don't want to leave anyone shortchanged. Um, uh, Simon from South East Bucks got in touch. He was uh, just after a bit more political satire in the show, and I know that we're literally seconds away from the end, um, so I think it's difficult, but uh, I oh, would say that satire. you would want that in Brian's Britain, wouldn't you? Well, Simon? you know what I always return to, oh, which is, um, you know, two on spoof news stories. Yeah. Mm. Um, a, a lorry load of wigs has crashed on the M4, <laughs> police are combing the area. Yeah. Actually. Absolute classic. Um, <laughs> there was uh, a, a, a madman has been um, terrorising nudist colonies with a meat cleaver. <laughs> Inspector Johnson's had a tip-off, but he hopes to be back in work on Monday. Oh. Thanks very much. Apologise. See ya. Built in 1926, the Hotel Yorba was indeed a real hotel in Detroit, but uh, is now no longer a hotel. It's used, I think, for uh, government housing. Steve Show, Six Music, with that kind of rock information, uh, which is uh, why so many of you tune in, I'm sure, every week. But uh, I suspect it's not just for me and my rock facts, but also my uh, posse here. A lot of people say there's a, posse is a bad word. I say no. Um, it helps me fill in those awkward silences when I've got nothing to contribute. So have a round of applause, please, Steve Wright, Star, as we welcome... Harry.
works in a bank, um, I think by his own admissions, one of the men responsible for the current economic climate. Almost solely. Interesting though, just like so many of the other bankers in the world, you've yet to issue an apology on the show. Well, no, this is it. You're very defensive. Well, how sorry am I, you know? <laughs> well, there we are. Well, people had it good for so long, you know, you need a short, sharp shock sometimes, and this, <laughs> this is what the world needs. Yeah, but you fat cats, uh, as you're probably off, you're probably off on your yacht, were you, at the weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Just, just fishing for, uh, fish. Fishing for fish, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then dangling them, uh, at the poor people. <laughs> on exactly, the on the shore. We'll look at this lovely dinner. The fishermen out of work on yeah. the shore. <laughs> um, I'll tell you someone who, um, needs no introduction, but it's going to get one anyway. Rufus, uh, wasn't with us last week, feeling a bit poorly, but he's back. Yes. Um, good to see you, still wearing the tash. Thank your you. play, of course, you're currently appearing in Noel <laughs> Coward's Private Lives. That's I right. laugh, not because there's anything wrong with being in the play, but it seems so ill-fitting somehow with an indie rock music station <laughs> that we should have someone appearing in uh, Noel Coward's Private Lives, but nothing wrong with that at well, all. Well, the is nothing but, nothing but eclectic. Is it, Steve? It's nothing but eclectic. It's got its finger on every pulse. Every it's pulse. Its, its eye on every kind of bleeding heart in the world. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, sending out a message of love and information. <laughs> That's right. As yeah. well as new music. Love Nation. Uh, so, for listeners to uh, know that there is a moustache broadcasting to them today, yeah. I think it's kind of comforting in a warm British kind of way. But also, what's good is it's not it's a non-ironic moustache. That's right. It's warm with... Funnily enough, uh, it's interesting, when you wear a moustache, I don't know if any gentleman listeners have worn moustaches, but there was a, there was a, um, a charity campaign to get people to wear grown moustaches starts in November. Uh, and you get funny looks, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, you wear, you realise that certain clothes don't work with your moustache. I can't wear my tight t-shirts and my tracksuit tops anymore. I you look could. like an idiot. I look either very gay or, <laughs> uh, like someone, uh, I just look like an idiot. So right. it's got to be ironed, crisply ironed shirts and jumpers. Um, and the other thing is when I dance I look very stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I do disco dancing, <laughs> I look really stupid. <laughs> sure. Uh, but otherwise, through daily life, and when I'm in Shoreditch and Hoxton, apparently it's all cool to wear tashes, so... Uh, well, this is it. My suspicion is it's all a bit ironic over there. Yeah. It, Lots it, of spiky hair and fashionable exactly. jeans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, don't get me started. So I'm, I'm wandering around the world now, uh, as much as I can, to work out where I look cool and where I don't. And, um, 1972. Yeah, that's where I've got to. <laughs> where you've got yeah, to. Yeah. Um, I was reading, there's been some glowing reviews of your play. Yes. I saw you described in one earlier, your performance, uh, as being, uh, playing a comic non-entity. Really? Which, uh, I think in many ways sums up our show. <laughs> My favourite one so far has been Michael Billington of The Guardian, who said I played Victor with Tweedy Vindictiveness. <laughs> tweedy Vindictiveness? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Um, well, I hope we'll be seeing plenty of that in today's show, as uh, per normal. Yeah, you will. Yes. Um, and uh, Sammy from the North. Hello. No such class, but uh, don't hold that against you. Not too. at all. How are you? Uh, okay. Um, I'm desperately in need of a wee because I did go for a wee earlier, but I was actually rigging up an el elaborate magic trick and actually <laughs> didn't wee. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. We started so promisingly there with some highbrow conversation about the current economic <laughs> crisis and the plays of Noel Coward, and you've already cheapened it. So typical of you and your ilk. <laughs> their album The Stoop, that's Little Jackie and 28 Butts. Steve shows six music with me, Steve Richard and my gang of cronies. Um, and controversy in the studio, uh, you remember, I don't know if you were listening just before the show began, but uh, Huey was playing some more reggae music, big reggae fan as you know, uh, often played some on the show, and uh, controversy here as Rufus declared, quite it. openly, yeah, furious he was, <laughs> he loathes reggae, he hates reggae, <sighs> tweedy vindictiveness at its worst. <laughs> <laughs> This is outrageous. No one instantly presumes you're a massive racist. I've said it before on Have this you? show. I've said, no, I've said before on the show that reggae music is not written with me in mind. But that doesn't make any difference. No music appears to be written with you in mind, except possibly the uh, Pomp and Circumstance by <laughs> Elgar. <laughs> that appears to be the only one that springs to mind. I don't really hate, I don't really, really hate reggae, but I can't... Country House by Blair. Yeah, that was definitely written for me. There's going to be texts aplenty <laughs> yeah. on this one. Yeah, um, but no, reggae you love. I, it, this, it's not really a loathing. It's just a sense that I, I just don't get it. And the only time I've ever really enjoyed it was a very long time ago when I was enjoying uh, a possibly a, a semi-illegal substance. 